Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over how to render static files in Go. And for this, we're talking about something like static assets, like JavaScript, CSS, or just like 404 pages. So to start off, we're going to open up our main.go in our editor. And you can see I'm using Go version 1.23.2, which is one of the most recent versions at the time of the recording. And then I'm also running the server right now. Um, you can see it's listing on all interfaces on port 8080. We have a simple get route to the root level, top level route, and it's a home handler that's just printing hello world. So we can go over to our browser and just go to localhost 8080 and we see we're getting plain text of hello world, which is as expected. Now we wanna add a static file server to go and luckily the standard library provides this right out of the box for us. However, we do need some static files first. So we'll create a assets folder then we'll cd into that and then we'll create a main.css and a main.js and we'll just open up both of those in our editor we can go and just for main.js we'll do a console log of hello world and for main.css we'll just do an example class with the color of red with that out of the way we can close these files and then go back to our main.go file where we'll define the wildcard route that will handle all these nested routes for us. This is why wildcard routes can actually be great in Go because they work with any path that's found nested under the specified route. So we can use our router now, which is a new serve mux as defined above. And we're just gonna say handle, and then we're gonna say all files in static. And then we're gonna strip the prefix of static and then we're going to have an http.file server with the http.dir of static. So we're going to explain this one by one. So the first thing we have here is slash static slash. And so this is a wildcard route and it's going to be a get request to localhost 8080 slash static. So this is what this is matching on right here is the actual route that's coming from our browser or client. And then we have this strip prefix, which is basically going to take if we remove this and just look at the route altogether, say we have a request for our main.js file. So they want to get our main.js, we should expect it to be at this static route and afterwards it's going to be hopefully at main.js. And so what strip prefix is going to do is going to take this route and just delete this here and you can see it's stripping the trailing slash as well. So it's just going to strip this and we'll have just get main.js. And so we need something to handle that and what's going to handle that is our HTTP.file server. As you'll see, HTTP file server returns a handler that serves HTTP requests with the contents of the file system rooted at root, where root is our parameter to this function. And we can see here that there's an HTTP.dir of the static folder, but we actually want to change this to the assets directory. And this is because we defined it as assets here. If we renamed it to anything else, then we would use that name. So with that out of the way, let's just test to make sure that our assumptions are correct. So we'll restart our Go server and go to our browser. And then you can see we have localhost 8080 and we'll go to slash static slash main.js. We should expect this to work. And as you see, we get the plain text of the JavaScript file, which is just a console log of hello world, which verify the CSS works as well. And we also get the plain text with the example class. So what if we were to just go to the static level top level route because it is a wildcard route. Well, here we get a listing of the files within it. This is a potential security concern because this could list any file that's in the specific folder you specified. So for us, we created our own assets folder, but if you were doing this at the root level folder of your project, you could have secret environment variables or other keys in there that could be leaked. So you have to make sure you're being careful on which folder you specified. And so that's why I always recommend to create a special subdirectory just for assets or static files. However, the file server does protect from other types of vulnerabilities, such as path traversal vulnerabilities. So if you're used to the command line format of accessing files, if you do multiple CDs backwards, basically in the route, it will not work. And so it does protect you from that out of the box. Now, what if we wanted to not have a listing here of all the files? There's actually that one caveat you can see in the file server here. As a special case, the return file server redirects any requests ending in index.html to the same path without the final index.html. So we can use this to just get rid of the listing by defining an index.html here. And then we'll just put a hello world with an h1 tag just so we know that it's 
being rendered as HTML. And we'll restart our server and go back to our browser, refresh, and you'll see we get hello world now instead of the listing at our static route. We can also do things such as 500 pages or 404 pages. So we'll create 404 to HTML and then open that in our editor. And now we're gonna define our 404.html file and we're gonna specify the head and body as well. And so we can restart our server, go back to our browser, refresh here. Still should be hello world. If we go to 404.html, we'll see we get our 404 with our 404 title. Now, how would we go about using the other static files and other HTML files in our app? For now, we don't have the dynamic rendering with HTML templates out of the Ghost Inner Library, but we do have these basic 404 files where we can still test how to add the static files that we defined. So we can simply do a link to a style sheet with our main.css, and I'm gonna do slash static slash main.css. So this should match what we have here with our slash static. And you can see the HTTP dir is gonna list these three files and it'll have a main CSS that it's listing. And then we're simply stripping the static here to actually match that on the server side. Now, all we have to do is add a class. And so we're gonna add the example class that we defined in our main.css file. See that matches up. And we can restart our server and go back to our browser and then refresh. And we'll see the text is now red, which means the CSS is applying. And we can just ins inspect that real quick. You can see the example class is applying with the color of red. Now, what if we wanted to define a single static route instead of all of the files within an assets directory? We're going to do this by seeding back into our root directory and touching a hello.txt. And then we're going to open that in our editor. And then we'll just say hello world again. And then we can close this and close our other static files as well while we're at it. And then we'll delete these routes. Now we'll define a, another handler for this. So we can do a handle func of get slash static file. And we'll do a static file handler. And we'll define that here, static file handler. And then we'll do http.sur file with this static file. With It's at the top level root level path. And so we'll just do hello.txt. We don't need to specify a directory. And now we can restart our server, go back to our browser. And if we go to static file, we'll see we get the plain text hello world again. So this method is simple and works. However, it comes with one potential security concern. If you're getting dynamic data from the user or client, you have to ensure that it's validated before passing it to this serve file function because it doesn't perform sanitization off the bat. So this potentially could introduce the path traversal vulnerabilities if you're not careful. You can use the file path dot clean method, although that's kind of out of the scope of this video. You should never trust data blindly from the browser. So you should always sanitize it before using it in any potentially dangerous manner. Lastly, I think there's an important thing to note is you should probably use caching for all these static assets. Depending on whatever reverse proxy or CDN you're using, you can simply just list the route to the static files as something that you want to cache. That way it puts less load on the server and the CDN is able to handle it for you as these are typically static files that aren't ever going to change or will change very infrequently. So I hope this gave you a good overview of how to use static files in Go. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment. Hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching.